<laughs> Hello everyone, this is B Harper from supermassy.com and welcome back to another audio review. Today I'm going to talk to you about Iron Man from 2008, directed by John Favreau, starring, in no particular order, Robert Downey Jr., Gwyneth Paltrow, John Favreau himself, and Jeff Bridges. Jeff frickin' Bridges. In 2008, two major high-profile uh, superhero films came out, Iron Man and The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight is great, but for me, in 2008, it was all about Iron Man. There is something so special and so refreshing about that film, and I feel it comes down to the fact that even though it still wears its comic book sensibilities so firmly on its metal sleeves, there still is an element of humanity to it. Well, there's a huge element of humanity. And a lot of that comes from Robert Downey Jr.'s performance as Tony Stark. I am a huge fan of Iron Man. I was a huge fan of Iron Man before the film came out, but the film pretty much... If there was ever uh, another sort of elevation of my love for a fandom, you know, Iron Man did that for me. The film managed to not only capture the character of Tony Stark with its spot-on casting of uh, Robert Downey Jr., but it just nails the beautiful balance between comic and reality. In the first sequence, you see Tony Stark as he is. Like, uh, he's a very charming, verbose... You know, he's able to, you know, create a conversation in, a, in an armoured car with all these... Um, folks in the military, when beforehand they were just like writing in silence and nobody is sure of what to say, so he's like, okay, I'm sick of all the silence, let's just talk here. And he is totally in control of the moment. It is such a wonderful sequence. And then it turns, you know, what follows is a, is a terrorism attack and, you know, what Tony Stark goes from being in control of the situation to being totally out of control. It is such a wonderful switch and it gives you an idea about what sort of movie this is. This film wears so many faces. It is a comedy, it is an action, it is a drama. Um, it's, it's character motivated as well as action motivated. It's just a wonderful, beautiful combination and balance and synchronicity of all of these, all of these wonderful elements. And needless to say, most, if not all, the actors are brilliant in their roles. I'm not usually a huge fan of Gwyneth Paltrow, but there is no denying that she can deliver a great performance. And her as Pepper Potts, uh, Tony's uh, uh, PR person as well as uh, soon-to-be uh, beloved, she is great. She's just so sassy and there's, there's something very Catherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy about uh, Robert Downey Jr. and Gwyneth Paltrow in their, uh, their shared banter scenes. It is so delightful to watch. Um, uh, Jeff Bridges as Obadiah Stane. He, everybody keeps on calling him the dude, but when in reality he's just one of the best actors out there. And even though the character of Obadiah Stane may not have uh, too much of uh, a fan base or any considerable depth, Bridges gives him that. When you find out later on in the film that he's fucked over Tony Stark in order to become, you know, the, the CEO of Stark Industries and, you know, make more weapons and just completely oppose everything that Tony comes to stand for, like, he, he seems, he makes this very sort of villainous turn, you know, seem natural. Uh, earlier on in the film, you just see him eating uh, pizza with pepper upstairs in, um, in, in Tony's uh, house, and, you know, there's, there's something so easy going about him that when he makes that switch to evil, it is kind of startling, but at the same time, it's really good. You always get the sensation that Obadiah is... He has a father and son dynamic with uh, Tony because, uh, as we find out in Iron Man 2, Tony had a very estranged relationship with his actual father, Howard Stark. So Obadiah has been his uh, father figure for most of his life. And it really makes you wonder as to how much... Uh, Obadiah was being genuine when he was taking care of Tony, you have that sort of really ambiguous thing about him. And once again, this character, you know, isn't particularly, you know, very fascinating on paper, but Bridges gives Stain such another dimension. And uh, Terence Howard, look, I, I like Terence Howard as an actor, and uh, I'm not going to say anything about his personal life because that's not what this film, or not, that's not what this review is all about. But 
he isn't what I really thought of in terms of our uh, James Rhodes. Now, James Rhodes is a huge character in the Iron Man mythos. Like, when Tony was uh, battling his uh, alcoholism in the, the Demon in the Bottle, like, uh, Rhodey became, you know, front and center. He was the one who wore the suit and went out there to, uh, you know, save the world and make it a better place. So, even though this was indeed an origin story for Tony Stark becoming Iron Man, I still feel that Terence Howard seemed a little bit of out, out of place with Rhodes, but once again, that's probably just because this film was all about Tony Stark's change from, you know, billion dollar playboy to somebody with a more increased understanding about how the world truly works and what the people go through. He used to, you know, sell weapons. He was he was basically a weapons dealer. He made weaponry and he got lots and lots of money out of it. But then he sees exactly what his weapons do in the wrong hands. Like, when he is taken captive by the terrorists in uh, uh, Gamera, I think it was, um, he sees just how destructive his own work is. He's like, oh my god, I've, I've created a monster. So he wants to make amends for what he's done. And this, I really can't praise this film enough for being so astute by casting Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark. Not only does he look like Tony, I feel that given Downey Jr.'s, you know, personal experiences with drugs and alcohol and just battling with these personal demons, Tony Stark is so perfect for him. <laughs> In a sense, it's like vaguely biographical, but of course, I I don't know Robert Downey Jr. inside out, so I'm not going to presume anything else on his character. So, in case you're watching this, um, Mr. Downey Jr., I sincerely apologize. I know nothing about you. <laughs> I do know what sort of uh, flavor ice cream you like, though, so... <laughs> um, well, what else can I say about this movie? That This movie almost single-handedly, you know, skyrocketed Marvel on the, the wonderful trajectory that it's on. It earned in a lot of bank, and people still look back on it with so much fondness. Um, as I said, back in 2008, it was the year of the Dark Knight for some, but for me, it was the year of Iron Man. So good. So, yeah, that was my review on Iron Man, and I apologize once again if I have spoken a little too quickly, but my enthusiasm for this film is enormous, as you can probably imagine. And yes, I know, there is no Iron Man on this shirt. I don't have any Iron Man shirts at all, and I really should change that. Um, but going back to it, Iron Man's just amazing. And uh, in case you haven't seen it, see it. It is the perfect amalgamation of superhero and action and drama. It's just, it's got everything for everyone. I, you will love it. Okay, everybody, um, so next time I'm going to review The Incredible Hulk, starring Edward Norton and Tim Roth, and that's going to be interesting because that film, unlike Iron Man, was severely polarizing, and we'll get to why next time. Bye-bye-bye. <sighs>